All right, I'm going to use a 3 8 inch bowl gouge with a swept back wing to go in there and try to clean up that bottom just a bit. Let's see what happens. Fortunately, well, looks like it broke off the tenon. So I think that's the end of the hollowing. All right, now I'm going to show you how we're going to we're going to mount this here so we can clean up the bottom and change the bottom shape. Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop. If you're not making mistakes, you're not having fun. And sometimes things just don't go right and you just got to got to laugh at yourself. So, as we'll see in these these clips that uh, some of them you've seen maybe in previous uh, videos, some of them wound up on the uh, cutting room floor so to speak. So, sit back and enjoy. So I, I left this scrap in here from a previous project, made sure it's flat, put on a little piece of double stick tape. I'm going to take this block and we're just going to put this thing right, roughly center it, and then bring up some tailstock support and give it about a 10. Let's try again. <laughs> put it up. First thing we got to do is take off the X, the protective cover here. That is the hardest part about using double stick tape. Now, for a funny, funny story, I was uh, at a men's group meeting at, at church and one of the fellows there, he had a box of books and he got ready right to open the, book, uh, the box and he didn't have a pocket knife. He says, well, what I really need is a pocket knife. And three guys whipped out a pocket knife. He's from New York. And he says, why is it that all you southern boys, that goes for us guys even over 60 if you're a southern boy, how come all you southern, southern boys always carry a pocket knife? And then someone commented, well, Bill, now that you live down here and you're retired and not catching an airplane, I don't understand why you're not, you're not uh, carrying one. So here's what it looks like. Basically, it's a chuck mounting system that whew, I'm going to have to get some cleaner to clean the grease off of this thing. And then these are ER32 collets, which is a, an industry standard. And they come in. Uh, doesn't look like it comes with any instructions. Got a couple of uh, couple of wrenches to tighten it up. Although uh, I read one review that talked about with this knurled uh, nut that actually in many instances you can uh, tighten it. the bevel that wasn't cool and I want this kind of trued up 90 degrees to give me a pretty good idea whether I've got this wing flat or not because I want a flat wing Oops. that didn't work I should have spun it around to make sure I had clearance with a banjo this piece right here always test your your clearance okay Hey y'all, welcome back to my shop for an episode of Wood Turning Jigs, Tricks, and uh, Jigs, Tricks, Jigs, Tricks, Tricks, Jigs, Wood Turning Tricks, Tricks, Tips, Tricks, and Jigs. Hey y'all, welcome back to my shop for another episode of Turning Tips, Tricks, and Jigs. Uh, okay, we're ready to get started now. I've let the uh, glue dry for uh, maybe 15 minutes we're going to bring up tailstock for support so let's go ahead and screw that on there with this wooden block and just to be on the safe side let's just give it a little bit of a test okay I feel better now we're going to bring up bring up tailstock support Get a 
feel for what's happening. And we're sloping it down. Uh-oh. There's... Look at that. If I haven't been for a tailstock support, I've been in trouble. It glued it and hold. So, we're going to have to try something different. Alright, now this is uh, Rub and Buff. You can get this at uh, hobby uh, stores or uh, craft stores like Hobby, hobby Lobby and, and Michael's in the United States. Now the trick to this stuff is it takes just a small amount and rub it Sorry, rub it between your fingers until you get it nice smoothed out where you can still see your fingerprint uh, uh, by hand. Rub this in there. Now the problem is we've got a little bit too much. Now uh, there's different techniques. I'm going to rub it all the way in and see if I can't clean the top, clean clean it off. Um, and to do that, we're going to use a little microcrystalline or, or type of uh, wax. I haven't tried this before, but I'm going to give it a try. Some neutral uh, shoe polish. It's a little bit dried out, but I think it'll probably work. So I'm just going to put a little of that on here. And then we're going to use this to, to kind of clean up that edge a little bit. not working very well. So let's try a different technique. And believe it or not, this technique I meant to try, we're going to use a little microcrystalline wax polish with Renaissance and it's got some solvent in it that, that makes a difference. And we're going to use uh, what they call a magic eraser. I, I think they also use this for makeup. But it cleans uh, stains off walls. Get just a, just a bit on there doesn't take much. If I can figure out where it is, just sniff it a little bit. And we're going to turn this up. And you can see with those, uh, with that petrochemical volatiles, it really, now I'm going to touch the center, it really cleans it up. And you've got some nice uh, nice detail on the inside. I might be now the exciting part <coughs> is that back hollowing. And the key to this is keep that keep that constant bevel bevel contact. So we'll see how that goes. Get that speed up just a little bit. Riding the bevel, slowly come around. Until it starts cutting, and enter the wood. Maintain that, maintain that double contact. This is an exciting cut, and I'm still still working out the details. Uh, I asked my buddy uh, Nick Cook what he thought about this this cut, and he said he thought it was a parlor trick. Uh, I think for Richard Raffin, it's a production technique that saves shaves a few seconds. Uh, but it's a it's a bit of a challenge, and he showed uh, Richard Raffin showed me how to do this one time in a demo. But obviously, it takes some uh, practice. Now the the challenge is. Of course, getting this up, and it looks like I've got, I'm using a small skew, and just slowly get under it, getting a little bit of a lift up there. Uh-oh, wood was too punky. It wasn't strong as I wanted it to be, so I have to go back to find another piece of wood to do that, uh, do that inlay. Okay, I picked up this little trick somewhere. You know, these, these glue tops always seem to stick, but if you use a, a 5 8 inch wrench, apparently it will leverage underneath here. At least that's what I understood.
it's an old bottle of glue. I tell you what, we'll not screw with that. We'll just take the top off, dip in the brush. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you aren't making mistakes, you aren't you aren't turning. So grab a piece of wood, spin it on the lathe, and have a good time. Safe turning.